okay, here's the circuit. Um, we have 12 volts charging a 1220 microfarad capacitor. So um, we have 12 volts on the uh, on the capacitor here. This makes it a nice buffered supply. And we have an LED and we have a transistor. So what do we have to add to the circuit in order to turn on the transistor? Well, people are probably screaming, well, your transistor's in backwards. You can never get you can never get the transistor to turn off. Well, let's take a look at the circuit. There it is. <laughs> look at that. It made a flasher circuit. I'm uh, flashing the uh, flashing the LED. And uh, let's monitor the voltage on that capacitor. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> charges up, chart, and then uh, the LED fires, and then it charges up. LED fires. This is what's called a relaxation uh, oscillator. Um, so yeah, this is a relaxation oscillator, and no, it's wired correctly. It is a uh, 2N. Right now I have a uh, 2N2222 in there. It also works with a 2N3904. Um, I can show that to you right now. Uh, we'll take out the uh, 222 and we'll put in a, uh, we'll put in a 3904. Let's see. I'm looking over there. We go. And uh, it is uh, it is flashing again. And uh, yeah, we're getting an oscillation. So, um, what does this thing do? Well, it abuses this transistor badly. Um, so the transistor has breakdown in the reverse direction. And uh, this transistor will break down at a certain voltage, and when it breaks, it kind of acts as a zener diode. And when it breaks down, the current will flow through this thing, and this LED will start conducting, and it'll discharge this capacitor. Once the capacitor is discharged to a low enough voltage, the LED won't be on any longer, and you'll be below the uh, zener uh, threshold of this. Uh, of this transistor and it will turn off and then I'll have to charge back up again that then goes back down then charge back up again and you can see that the uh, charging up takes time because it's a 1k resistor into 220 microfarads but the discharge time is very very fast um, because the LED is firing and the zener diode is firing immediately um, now what I found interesting though is I'll go back over to here um, I showed you a 2222 and I showed you a 3904 and um, let's go ahead and change this out to another 3904 okay and you can see that he's working he's working just fine now let me change it out to another 3904 and it's on all the time, just a little bit. It's not, it's not oscillating, okay? We can monitor that voltage again. Let's see, let's move things around here. And uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a, a DC voltage, okay? Just, it's a, just a DC voltage. So, why are some 3904s happy and another 3904s are not happy, all right? So, I get to use my curve tracer again. <laughs> let's go take a look. All right, um, so I have the transistor in there and I have the transistor in backwards. So it's, it's, it's like I'm, 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 I've, I'm, I'm gonna sweep a diode. Okay, so I'm going in the forward direction, but I have the emitter tied uh, to the high and the collector tied to ground. And so as we come along here, you'll see that there's a breakdown, all right? So where does that breakdown occur? at five, six, seven, eight volts. So, so this, this LED uh, transistor uh, breaks down at eight volts, okay? This is a 2N2222. And uh, so that's making it look like a zener, okay? It's got a funny little knee down there at the bottom. It's got a funny little crook. If we continue to go up in current just a little bit, you can see that it breaks over. So I believe that this is the, av we're seeing the avalanche, okay? So these devices can avalanche. A lot of times they're used in uh, uh, 
noise um, generation circuits and stuff. Because of that avalanche effect there, you can make a, a noise source. Um, so anyway, I think that what we're seeing there is the avalanche. And I think the avalanche is important in this particular circuit. My theory is that the transistors that um, work well have avalanche and the ones that don't work well do not have avalanche. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but uh, that's one, two, 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 two. That one works. Uh, let's try this transistor. This transistor works. He goes up, breaks down in avalanches. Uh, let me find a, uh, a 3904 that works. Okay, that one doesn't work. We'll save him. Uh, let's see. Let's try this one here. Okay, this one works. So this 3904 works. All right, put him in. He goes up. And there he goes. See, see him bend over? He's got a little bit of that avalanche thing going on there. Okay. And then let me put in the 3904 that doesn't work. And this one goes straight up. Okay, it doesn't do the avalanche thing. So I think the avalanche is key to this uh, to the circuit working. And for whatever reason, some transistors don't do that, or at least at these voltages. Let me uh, let me crank it up a little higher. Let's see what happens. Does it ever? Yeah, it does avalanche at a much much higher voltage. It does start to it does start to kink over. Let's see, move it up here. Yeah, it's starting to bend. So. I think that some transistors just don't avalanche as much. Okay, that's a pretty strange circuit. Um, give it a try. It's a, it's a, it's a fun one. Uh, you need to make sure you have enough voltage here to break, to break it down. If this, if this voltage goes too low, then you don't, you don't cross that 8 volt threshold that these guys need. So make sure your, your voltage is high enough. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, one transistor relaxation oscillator.